my way to the food museum in Stowe Market. I'm riding my old girlfriend, Seen here, who uh, comes fully equipped with some semi-functioning side-mounted derailers, missing uh, front brake pad for extra aerodynamics, and she's got this super high-tech pizza kit of electrical tape that holds the brake cables together. Um, she's an old girl, but she's got some speed to her, so we're gonna head up from Mendelsham here and hit Stowe Market and go check out the Fear Museum where I work. So we made it, we're here at the Food Museum in Stowe Market, um, where I've worked for the past uh, year. Um, and um, it's a really cool place. We've got loads of projects on and different things happening that we're all getting, uh, gearing up and getting um, together for um, our big launch night, which is gonna be on June 22nd um, of this year. Um, it's a really interesting place though because we've got um, 84 acres of countryside, literally in the middle of a rather large sized town in Suffolk um, and it's right off the high street in fact Asda is right there um, <clears throat> and if you go that way it's actually Saturday so it's market day so you, you can go down the high street and um, do your shopping whatever and then you can literally spend the day here um, at the museum where it's kind of like a um, an outside museum more than it is inside. Although we do have 17 historic buildings with loads of different, I think we say something like 40,000 different objects, um, plus the river trail and a new allotment site um, that I um, that I helped develop and um, livestock and all kinds of different things. So anyways, we'll go around. There's actually a wedding happening today, so you'll get to see um, some of the wedding setup and stuff as well. Um, and we'll do some behind the scenes stuff too. So even though I am here on my day off, um, <laughs> I've got an artist here who um, is installing the last sculpture on um, the river trail. So um, she's asked me if I could uh, help out a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna be bring her down a, a nice tall step ladder for her um, because she's putting up something really cool. But I'll explain all that when um, when we get down on the trail. But um, yeah, let's. Uh, Let's go do this first, and um, <laughs> we'll see what we see on our way. I'll never let you go away Cause this love is impossible Right, so I'm almost to where my artist is. Um, she's just around the corner here. I'll uh, bring her the ladder, but I'll see if she um, um, can explain a little bit of her, her, her piece because it's really cool. It's probably one of my favorite ones that are on here. Um, it's like a, a three-dimensional spider's web made from wire. And then um, she's making like woodland creatures and food-related items out of um, like utensils and different like sort of kitchen products like spoons and... Um, different really cool things so um yeah i don't know if she has any of the sculptures here yet because she's still installing the wire bit um but maybe by like this afternoon she'll have some stuff in um actually secured onto it but if not i'll just sort of like include little um little pictures and stuff like that um while she's explaining 
Lois Cordelia here. Um, I'm at this moment building a giant spider's web, which is to say like a food web, it, a, a web of life in the woodlands here at um, the Food Museum. And I'm using wire of all sorts to show the interconnectedness of all living things, basically. Um, I'm going to be populating the strands of this web, which is quite strong, um, with critters, um, little creatures and things, um, plants and animals and fungi that I've made out of wire and um, a variety, a miscellany of um, food related metal items that I'm going to be uh, that, that I've sculpted into a bee, an otter, um, all sorts of animals and plants that are relevant to the riverside here in Stone Market. And um, yeah, it's, it's shaping up really well. I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here at my office. Um, it's kind of like a storage container that's been converted into a little office space. Um, here we are. It's actually quite nice, quite open. Um, this is probably the cleanest that it's ever been. <laughs> I, um, I actually have to feed the owls today, which we'll go have a look at and have a bit more of a chat about. Um, but so I've got this freezer in my office where I hold, um, dead animals. So <laughs> this is, um, my wild, my birds of prey food. Um, so I've got some, I, uh, I'll bring some of those down with us when we go down to the woodland. Um, but since we're up here, um, <clears throat> I'll show you the workshop area as well. And in actually inside, um, that building there, that's our large, um, collection storage area for all the, the big things like, um, other wagons, and different things. Well, you'll see, I'll show you, I'll go, I'll go in there. And actually show you and um, right near my office here is this lovely um, medieval building called Edgar's farm so um Edgar's farmhouse I should say um, so we'll go in there as well we'll check out Edgar's farmhouse but um, I'll show you a little bit around um, where I actually work so the behind the scene behind the scenes with the estate team <laughs> Right, so we are in um, the workshop. Um, we've got our quad bikes here, um, loads of different tools and things around. Uh, I don't think I need to open the shutters today because I'm not going to take the quad out. Um, we've got our kitchen to this door here. So this would be the estate team kitchen um, where we've got our staff charts, kind of like a little break room, coffees and teas and biscuits and things, map of East Anglia. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, and then back here, um, all kinds of different tools. And in the back this way is where we keep uh, more of our, like our lawnmowers and our, our strimmers and um, anything sharp, really. <laughs> but through this door, which I'll show you, is um, our large collections storage space set. It's very cool, and we'll go have a look. Right, so like I said, this is where everything is housed that um, isn't on display. So it's stuff that's been donated or we've acquired in some way that um, we just don't have the space to to show at the moment. Um, also in here, though, is this really cool place. This is um, for, we're digitizing our our collection, everything here, plus the stuff that is on display. We've, we are in the process. If not, we're pretty close to finishing digitizing all of it. And this is um, a little shed that our photographers use. Um, 
to bring the objects in and photograph uh, the smaller objects, obviously. Um, and then they're on the laptops and the computers and they're putting it on our system and logging it so that you can be anywhere in the world and um, go through the whole collections of um, the museum here, which is really, really interesting. But let's have a walk around and I'll show you some um, really cool stuff that's sort of hiding um, back in this lovely storage space. <laughs> So yeah, we've got like loads of um, old farm equipment and uh, wagons and um, <clears throat> all kinds of different stuff. Lots of like um, uh, like dairy wagons and uh, dairy carts and things like that. And just a load of different old sort of agriculture um, tools and machinery and um, and then also sort of like kitchen related things. and lots of different sort of rural life objects back here um and it's really really interesting um don't really understand the um extent of how much that we actually have here but you can like i said go on our website and um look at all the collections online which is really neat um this has actually isn't even all of it because we do actually have a small collection storage area um that i won't go into today because it's kind of just like um, shelves that you can't, you have to kind of move them around and stuff and I don't want to break anything. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is the large collections um, storage area. We'll um, head out and go see what else we can find. So this is something really cool. Um, this here is actually kilns for charcoal making. And we've got a volunteer who comes here and every Thursday um, he does charcoal making demonstrations. Um, using um, wood that he's cut. Um, it's mainly ash trees. Um, but um, yeah, there's really, he's like one of the very few people in the world who, um, definitely in the UK, who uh, make charcoal. And so anyhow, he makes it here. Um, I think that's, I'm not sure what that is. And to, to be honest, I've never seen him do it. <laughs> um, but he does make the charcoal here, does demonstrations on it. And then um, back up at the shop is where we sell it. Um, and it's really good stuff. I have used it before. Um, and it's, 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 um, it's pretty fantastic. So, but really interesting demonstration um, for, for our visitors to come and see. Right, so this is something really, really cool. Um, this here, if it'll focus, come on. This is called a bee orchid. And as you can see, it looks quite similar to, similar to a bee. But um, there's so much more to it than that. Right, so um, these little guys are so cool because not only do they look like bees, but they actually smell like bees. Um, not to me though, because I don't know what a bee smells like. To bees, to other bees, this smells like a bee. However, what's extremely interesting about this is that it took obviously, you know, evolution to develop that the, the color and the look of a bee and the actual smell of a it's actually of a female bee who's ready to mate so that attracts male bees in to come and pollinate however what is super crazy about this is that the bee that it it um evolved to to attract is actually extinct it doesn't exist anymore so it evolved again and it now self seeds um, and if you let your grass grow, there's um, a fair chance that you actually might see one of these rare bee orchids. We've got a load of them here in this patch, and they're all marked with little stakes. Um, and we've got patches around site um, showcasing bee orchids, and they are fascinating. We're going to go into, th into the shop here and have a look around, um, which would be great. Um, they sell uh, lots of local beers and local alcohols. Um, there's different sorts of things you would expect to find in a museum gift shop. Um, cookbooks as well. Um, some really, really neat ones. And 
there's actually though a print press, an old print press um, machine, like the the um, I think yeah, is it where we make um, all of our own posters for our events and things with the old print press. And on Thursdays, you can actually come and do um, oh <laughs> my oh I see my colleague coming around the corner with a little puppy that they just got. Um, let's go check that out. So this is the um, Abbott's Hall um, estate. It's the manor house. Um, it was built in 1709. Um, it's really quite interesting for um, several reasons. In here, though, is where we house um, most of our, our exhibits, our main exhibits <clears throat> anyways. Um, um, so this is where we have um, uh, Marvel Dining with Heroes exhibit. So we've got the costumes for um, the black or from the Black Panther movies. Um, it's actually not on display yet, um, but I think I could sneak us in. Um, having said that, though, we have um, a parlor in here and a few other sort of exhibition spaces on the ground floor. Up top, upstairs, there's a local um, eco group who um, has um, an exhibition up there called Every Garden Matters, and it's about. Um, the importance of, of maintaining your your garden, even whether it's small or large. Um, and then there's also our um, the offices, the, the main offices, so um, the director's offices upstairs, and um, um, some of our, our my other colleagues. Um, what's really interesting though about Abbott's Hall is that in most places in the um, on the estate, the manor house would have all of the stuff that would have originally been here. Um, but ours doesn't because of what I just said. Having said that, all of the stuff from the manor house is down there on Crow Street in a little pink cottage. Um, so we do Crow Street cottage tours, or down at the dairy, I think, is what we're uh, what it's now titled. And um, super, super interesting stuff down there. We won't get a chance to go in there today. Um, actually, maybe we will. Maybe we will. I'll see. We'll see. But like I said, um, I don't want to make this video like four hours long. Um, behind the hall is um, the walled garden, and we'll go have a walk through there, but first we'll get inside um, Abbott's Hall and look at some of the um, exhibits. <laughs> Okay, so um, I've got I got my colleague Darren, um, who's here today, who's got a, a set of keys. Um, he's gonna let us into um, this room here, which is where the Marvel costumes are. We're like totally not allowed to go in here um, because the, ex the the exhibit's not set up properly yet, and also there's like a lot of sort of like legal things. Um, the main reason why it's not open yet is because we need to have. Um, um, like uh, around the clock surveillance on the costumes because they are the costumes from the Marvel movie Black Panther. Um, they're the real ones that were actually worn. And so there's a lot of like legalities to it. So because we can't find um, enough volunteers to um, watch the costumes essentially, um, it's not open yet, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna sneak in and I'll, we'll have a look.
right, so that was um, Abbott's Hall. Um, behind me here is the marquee. It's our main marquee. Um, it's up for most of the year. It comes down in the winter to get cleaned and everything. But um, this is where we have like a lot of weddings and different things. Um, which is one today, and we're going to pop our head and just have a little look to see what a wedding setup is like. And then on the field behind me here is um, one of our main events field. So this year we're having we're hosting the Prima Donna Festival. We hosted it last year, and it's essentially um, a festival celebrating uh, women authors um, in the UK. It's actually a really big festival, and it's it's more than that though. It's it's quite interesting. Um, lots of musical acts um, and sort of like celebrity guest appearances and interesting activities. People can camp here on site, um, but I mean activities range from like like there was like really sort of um, serious debate topics um, on stage. You know, panels discussing different different things. Um, to uh, like a dance like Beyonce session. So it's quite fun. That'll be this summer um, across the whole site, but this will be sort of where the main stage is. But yeah, let's see if we can pop in and have a look at the um, marquee here. Okay, so the area um, where I am right now is we call it the home clothes area. It's essentially um, a cafe, unfortunately, a cafe, like what that sign is saying. Um, it's being renovated right now. We're actually undertaking all the renovations. Um, um, so it's not open at the moment. But in this area, we have um, the cafe. We have um, what's called the activity room, which is um, for us, for staff, it's where we, where we keep a lot of our um, um, equipment and things. Um, for different activities, especially right now, a lot of it has, is obviously cooking related and has to do with the bread oven, which we'll go see. We have a domestic life building, which goes through, um, it's sort of like Suffolk through the ages, um, which we'll go have a look at. But what's really cool, um, two things are my favorite, is the med medieval barn, which we'll go in. Um, there's a wedding going on in there today that my colleagues are setting up for. Um, and then there's the gypsy caravans. So I'm inside um, Abbott's hall barn which is a medieval barn on site you can see from the beams uh just how crazy old it is um i'm kind of just gonna like skim over a bunch of like information because otherwise this video will be like, like four hours long but essentially it's the oldest building on site um but today there's a wedding that's going to be happening um so we're kind of sneaking in behind the scenes um before they get here but um Lots of people have their weddings here in this lovely barn. Um, it's an absolutely fantastic place. The other really cool thing that we do here is um, in these uh, stalls, that, like these sort of separate areas between the beams that run down, um, we host a beer festival every year in the summer. Um, this year's gonna be our 25th anniversary for Beer Fest. Um, and it is absolutely fantastic. People come in through the barn doors here. There's all kinds of kegs down that way, and then they exit through the barn doors over there, and they just keep coming around and around, sampling um, local beers or like microbreweries from around the country. Um, and it's really cool. But um, yeah, I'll flip the camera around and show you um, sort of more of this um, without my face in, in the way. <laughs> Gypsies um, were a big part of the food of food growing across the country. They would, you know, get seasonal work wherever they went. And we have a very cool collection of um, these gypsy caravans that um, are just absolutely fascinating. Um, so I'll just, like I said, I'll just kind of give a, a brief overview um, of it um, and just kind of show you around a bit. Um,
as you can see, there's sort of like displays of what um, the high street kind of would have been like in the past. Um, this is probably my favorite little section in this building, which is um, uh, an old grocer is an example of a, an old sort of grocery store. Um, I don't remember loads about the actual history, unless I were to actually read the signs, but um, a fun story that my colleague, um, Darren actually, who, who led us into the marble thing, <laughs> um, one that he told me was, if you might notice on the, on the wall back here, literally that, OMO, M-O-O, or sorry, O-M-O. -O. Um, apparently, during war times, the, um, young ladies here in the UK, in the UK, really um, liked the American men who came uh, from overseas. And um, what they used to do is the young women would put the OMO um, box um, in their window, which apparently stood for old man's out, and that would be a hint for American soldiers to um, pay them a visit. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, it's kind of like uh, wartime Tinder. <laughs> okay, so I'm now here at our, um, this is one of the most, sorry, this is one of the most um, recent builds on site. This is our traditional bread oven, our wood-fired oven. Um, <clears throat> that just went up last year, and we use this heavily a lot in um, different sort of cooking uh, courses and demonstrations. Beside it, um, <clears throat> we also built um, a little hut here, so in there there's like a fridge, and it actually converts into like a mini bar for events, because what we do is one of the events we have, it's not quite set up yet, but in the glade over here, in that space, um, we set up a stage, and um, we get we get music, um, live music going there. Typically, a food truck over here somewhere. Um, people can sit inside this little marquee, and we always have um, a guest baker come in, and and so that you get um, your baked goods, a meal from a, uh, a local food truck of some kind, and um, and live music, and it's really really cool. Um, we've also used the bread oven area. Um, <clears throat> to host other kinds of programming, so um, lots of classes for uh, kids, cooking classes for kids, um, um, school meal programs uh, um, during the school year and in the summertime, there's other things like that going on, as well as last year we, um, when um, refugees um, came, uh, the Syrian refugees, um, we did a... Um, we collaborated with the organization, organization in Ipswich that brought the refugees in, and um, we did like sort of um, cooking days with them here. But it, it was less about the food and more about the social, the social bit that um, food and cooking um, can bring people together. And that was here at the bread oven, um, and that was a really, really cool experience. Um, I mean, the Suffolk countryside is weird even for local people <laughs> sometimes. So um, it was really quite enriching, um, both for the refugees who came, but also um, for us. I mean, they kept bringing recipes from their home country to let us try, and they shared with us. And like, and then they really wanted to try sort of like UK things. Like, they, I think like apple crumble was like on the top of their list for um, what they wanted to make. But um, yeah, that all goes down here at the bread oven. Um, I don't know where we're going to go next, but um, let's just go for a walk. So we're now on the top field. Um, this is where we have our larger buildings. 
Um, and this field here is our main event field site. This is where we host um, Bonfire Night. Um, so the Guy Fox Night on uh, Remember, Remember the 5th of November. Um, that's here on this big field. And then um, behind us is the Bone Building, which we'll go in because um, it's uh, an unfinished exhibition space right now, but uh, I've been doing a lot of work in there helping them get it together. There's the Bowie Building. The behind it, which you can't see, is the Mortlock Building. Um, and then we've got um, the Farm Barn uh, as well. And we'll go have a look at all of them. I'm about to take you into the Bone Building. Um, it's named after William Bone, um, who uh, donated um, the building. Um, he was part of the, the, the Ransoms um, family, and the Ransoms is, um, they were a company in Ipswich that made um, farm equipment. Um, all of the farm equipment on site, well most, most all of it is, is likely Ransoms. Um, they were pretty well the worldwide powerhouse of uh, farming equipment, and they developed the self-sharpening plow. <laughs> um, but right now, what we're doing is we're converting this space into um, a new exhibition space for our uh, exhibition that's coming up called the Hedro, Hedro Exhibition or Hedro um, Project. Or, um, anyways, it's going to feature loads of different like art, um, historical um, facts and resources about hedgerows, um, foraging things. Um, but we've also installed a kitchen. So there's um, a uh, a tasting area and a cooking demonstration area as well as down in this section here um, there's like a little sort of mini movie theater thing so we can show educational um, media as well as um, some display cases and 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 different bits um, it's not finished yet but I do want to kind of just show you because it is kind of neat to see a little bit behind the scenes of an exhibition space being being um, being built <laughs> So yeah, this is it. Um, it's obviously not done at all, but um, we're getting there. Uh, we'll we'll be ready in time for um, the big launch night. But um, basically, we've got um, an outside curator who's come in and working with our curator here, um, um, and uh, we've got some art installation happening as well. The kitchen area is basically done. Um, there's obviously a few more bits to go in and things like that. Um, but in terms of the actual exhibition space, um, we've built all these um, walls and panels, um, painted the cases um, like that, and um, did a bunch of different things to get the space ready and prepped for um, the curators to do their thing and to get the exhibition actually installed. So. Um, yeah, it's well on its way. It's gonna look really, really good. Um, and there's a lot of really cool content and um, interesting things um, um, regarding hedgerows, which, which are just absolutely massive in terms of um, agriculture and food production um, right from the start of, of, of you know, sort of history um, and onward, every, everything from, from foraging to, um, you know, um, separating fields and keeping livestock in or other things out. Um, there's lots to it. So um, it's really cool. I'm really excited to see this all come together. But um, yeah, this is sort of an exhibition space in progress. Um, it's really great to um, have been able to sort of contribute to this. Um, it's been a lot of fun, actually. So we're going to head into the um, Bowie building now, which is this here. It is 
quite something. It houses um, a lot of our um, steam engines. What I really like though is that up here in the rafters, house martins are nesting up there. Um, if we wait, wait around long enough, we can we can see one probably come come in and out kind of thing. But um, we'll do a walk through, and then we'll go to um, the red building down there and have a look at um, some of the really cool steam engines that we have in here. So um, this steam engine here, this one, um, we actually take this one out quite quite often um, on events, on event days and things. And uh, you can sit up there and um, actually drive it around, which is really really neat. Um, I think it, it takes about a couple hours to get started because uh, <clears throat> you got to get the fire going and everything. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a steam engine. It um, is super fascinating. Lots of people um, come around to, to not just look at it, but to actually get a chance to use it during events. And um, we also use this um, on our uh, thrashing machine. Um, this is what powers the thrashing machine to um, separate the grain from uh, the wheat stalks that we grow here, which we'll go um, have a look at now, actually. Yeah, we'll go check out the crop fields. Actually, before we get to the crops, I do want to show you um, this building here, which is the farm barn. Um, this here. But what's really cool about it, well, for me, <laughs> one of the things I've done is I've put um, swift boxes up top there. You see them? Um, to try and encourage swifts to nest here. What's especially interesting about them is that I've got um, an amplifier hooked up to them and a speaker with, that plays um, a sound. And if um, it's, I have it set to a timer right here, but I can flick it on and you can see what I mean. Um, it's not working. <laughs> okay, what happened? Um, all right. I, um, I'm a bit at a loss for why it doesn't work, but I promise it did at least play. Um, swift noises to try to call them in. Um, the other neat thing about this backspace is this is where we have um, I, well, um, an Adidas bag. No, um, <laughs> this is where we have our um, our food for our livestock where we come in here. We do keep the rest of it stored somewhere else, but this is primarily where it is so that volunteers and staff can um, easily feed um, the animals, which we'll have a look at them while we look at um, the crop rotation field. So, anyhow, um, yeah, that's this end of the farm barn um, with swift boxes up there. This portion of the farm barn. Um, this is a space that we use a lot for um, activities, family activities, um, different um, sorts of workshops, um, but it's all so it's kind of education space but also um, an exhibit. And my colleague Lisa created this fantastic um, timeline of um, farming through the ages. Um, and it's super cool. So it goes over everything. Um, there's four, or sorry, five um, main timelines um, that it follows. So it shows you things like key, key moments in farming, in history, um, and sort of the population and the diets at the time. It is super, super intriguing. And it goes all the way down here. All the way to sort of um, modern farming, everything from organic to um, 
um, precision farming and um, shows you what's in season here in the UK and then gives you um, sort of some top exports from around the world. Um, but yeah, multi-use space on this side of the farm barn. Um, and on the other side, there's more uh, wagons and um, farm equipment. So as we come down this way, we've got to the left of me, our crop rotation fields, where we grow, we're growing oats and wheat primarily at this moment in time. And then to the right of me, we've got um, the start of where our livestock um, are. So we have um, specific kinds of livestock here, specific breeds. Don't worry about that smoke over there. That's something else I'll explain. Um, <laughs> but um, these here are Norfolk horns. Um, we've got um, South Down sheep as well. Um, we've got Herdwicks and um, Hebrides. But the primary reason, oh, here we go. We've got, um, we've got Buddy here. Hello. <laughs> but um, the reason why we have Norfolk horns and um, South Down is because the way that you get a Suffolk sheep, which is the only Suffolk breed of sheep, um, is by breeding Norfolk horns with South Downs. Um, so we actually do demonstrate that process here at the museum, which is really fascinating. And we had a really good lambing season this year. Um, and uh, I think we've got 12 lambs on site now. Um, several sheep. I can't even, I don't even know what the actual count is on that one. Um, but yeah, so that's sort of the livestock portion. We're here in our crop rotation field. Um, it's all organic. We don't use any weed killers, or anything like that. Um, we're growing mainly cereal grain. And that's primarily for the fact that down there, there, that white building is our water mill that is being renovated. And I'm hoping we can pop in and see today. Um, it's off limits to the public right now because it's not being finished, but it's going to be up to working order where we can grow our grain crop here, get it milled in the mill, and then bring it up to the uh, traditional bread oven um, to um, do sort of a field to fork or seed to sandwich <laughs> type thing. The other neat thing about this though is that we use this as activities um, for families um, so they can come out and have a go at farming, which we call it have a go farming, um, using everything from bird scarers to um, like pulling up weeds, removing stones and sort of doing things in the traditional manner. Um, we also harvest our grain crop with the antique equipment that we have here um, and use do that as demonstrations for the public at the appropriate time of year. So um, very cool. So I'm now standing in our orchard. It was planted about um, three years ago now. They're not quite um, ready to, to fruit just yet, um, but there's several different um, species of apple, plums, um, and other kinds of um, food that grows on trees, basically. Um, in this section as well is where we have our poultry. We've got our ducks and chickens and turkeys down there. Uh, and we also have some Norfolk large black pigs um, that we'll have a look at as well. I think what we'll do is we'll make our way around. We'll go check out the poultry, come back up and do a bit of a loop down by the mill and go see if we can pop our heads in there. <laughs> This here is a brand new sheep paddock um, that I put in um, uh, with my trainees. Um, 
it's beside this older one here. Um, there's no sheep in it at the moment because they're down in one of the meadows grazing, but we do have a couple of sheep um, in this old paddock here. Um, but yeah, that's where we normally keep um, the Hebridean sheep because, um, especially on Wednesdays, we do put them in there because uh, the estate manager, Paul, here, he does sheepdog demonstrations with his own personal sheepdog. Um, and um, so we, we corral them into that pen, well, he does, with his, with his uh, dog, Taff. And um, that's uh, another sort of public um, demonstrations for the public. But yeah, let's carry on down to the mill here. standing in front of the water mill. Um, this mill was actually um, in a totally different location of Suffolk um, for, well, when it was built. Um, and then in the 19th, I think it was built in, the, oh, there's a thing here. What was it? I don't know. It's, it's a mid 18th century mill, water mill. So it was actually brought here in the 70s, piece by piece, and assembled, and put back together. Um, it is open right now because the, um, the uh, wonderful builder man who's uh, helping um, get the project all, all, all together is here today. Um, so I can get in and have a couple of shots of what's inside. But um, basically, there's so much work that's been done in here. Um, and there's quite a bit more left to go, but it's still, um, it should be ready in time for our launch night. Um, but we're trying to get this up and running, fit for human consumption, um, the flour that we'll produce out of it, which is really, really quite special. The way it works actually is so the river is behind me here, just behind this sheep paddock. We pump it up to the mill pond, um, which we'll go look at and I'll explain a little bit more. And then the water will run through the back and um, spin the wheel and then that'll move the, um, the grindstones. So um, let's just go in and have a look. Down there is where the main shaft is, and um, in um, this wall houses um, that sort of that that wheel that you see, like you'll see like in movies where you see like water mills with like rivers running in it, and it, it with the paddles. Um, that's in here now. Prior to this, one of the first things that happened when they were getting this done is that they had to actually replace the axle, um, like the main shaft, which I don't know if you can see that, but it is absolutely massive. That is essentially the tree trunk of an oak tree. <laughs> um, so that had to get replaced. Um, the way that they did it was that through this door, they got a crane to lower, to, to sort of lift it in over the, over the lip there on the ground, on the floor. And then like, like Egyptians building the pyramid, we put rollers down and had to roll the thing over to it, remove all these floorboards, get it down into there, and then roll the shaft in just because of how heavy it was. Um, like I said, it was like lifting an actual oak tree. But um, there's about three, uh, three or four levels um, to this building. Um, I don't think I'll get to the very, very top. It's a little bit dangerous up there. There's like holes in the ground or in the flooring where like they would have put like um, grain and stuff would have shot through. Um, and you can see sort of like little trap doors and, and, and things like that, that um, I don't want to step on and fall through. But yeah, we'll head up to the top and just have a look at sort of everything. Um, this is another one where I've been helping a lot. I actually have, uh, I am in the process of painting that wall. <laughs> That's the ladder I left there yesterday. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be really, really cool. It's very exciting um, to be part of this as well.
I'm through this door over here. Um, through this door, because we're 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 actually quite high up where we are right now. Um, just beyond this door is the mill pond. Um, now, because this wasn't here originally, the mill pond actually had to be made so that this could work for demonstration purposes, but also so that now we can mill our own grain and um, for the public. Um, having said that though, that mill, the, the pond was never there. So it had to be dug out and created. Obviously ponds don't sustain their own water. So what has had to happen is we get um, river from the Rattleson River. It gets pumped up into the pond so that that's where the water comes from. And then the water, if I can go out here, um, let's see. I think it's locked from the other side. <laughs> we'll go around. We're on the other side of this door now. Um, but basically what happens is water from the pond flows through there and then into the mill and it um, spins the wheel and that makes the uh, grindstones mill the grain into flour. Um, so it's a really, really cool process and um, really quite an exciting thing to be able to to demonstrate and show people. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to make our way um, down to the river trail and I will show you um, what I've been up to.